Yes, um, I'm on Shobat, and actually I trained in the adult medicine clinic with Sarah Jackson and was part of that first open note study and then brought open notes to the Los Angeles County Department of Health Services. Uh, next slide, please. So um, when I came here uh, back to Los Angeles, we did a QI survey of our patients in our medical records line and asked, why are you here and how much time are you spending here and what are you trying to get out of your visit today? And overwhelmingly, our patients were looking for their doctor's notes. And there were some things that they were looking for that they already had online through the patient portal, but we didn't have great uptake of the patient portal at that time. So labs were also a very popular thing that was available on the portal. And of course, there was interest in things like operative notes, discharge summaries, emergency room notes, imaging reports, and what we decided at that point in speaking with our patients is that we could release a lot of that online um, and make it easier for everyone. And we had patients sometimes waiting up to an hour in some of our busy, busy hospitals waiting for their medical records. And they reported they were paying up to sometimes $300 based on the cost per page of printing, um, which was very restrictive. Next slide. Um, and so we started a pitch for open notes at uh, DHS in LA County. And this is actually part of the presentation that we gave our provider groups, we gave in grand rounds. So you're seeing a little bit of that here. So we believed that it was the right thing to do for our patients. And we knew from the data that Sarah presented that patients feel more in control of their health and have increased trust with their providers just through the act of sharing. And we believe that it promotes patient-centered care and patient engagement in medical care. Next slide. And so we started sharing notes on January, in January 2018, so it's been a little over a year now. Um, and we did not release older notes. And this is also a little bit of the Cerner build because we are on Cerner. Um, and we did have some issues with this uh, initially, so our primary care docs were a bit concerned. We, so we delayed their rollout to April, um, but that gave them three months to kind of get comfortable with the initial rollout, which was pretty broad, and I'll talk about that. Next slide. Um, and we decided to post notes 72 hours after the note was signed in the chart. This was specifically a concern around, we have a lot of training physicians in our hospital-based systems, and so attendings wanted the opportunity to addend a note. At this point, I think we might actually move this to immediate because it doesn't seem like it really um, has much effect. And patients in Cerner can see that a note is pending uh, or a study is pending, and so sometimes that can cause a little bit of anxiety as they would like to see that right away. Next slide. Um, so one question that a lot of people had was, is open notes the same thing as an open chart? Is there everything in the chart is that seen in open notes? And our answer to that was no. The purpose of sharing notes was really for patients to better engage in their plan of care and to have key clinical notes that could help patients engage in that care. And we were already sharing our imaging notes at that point. Next slide. Uh, so we shared Inpatient notes, so we shared history and physicals, discharge summaries, and specialty consultations. We have two types of specialty notes, consultation and progress notes. And we did not share the progress notes because we find those to be very wordy and sometimes inaccurate. Um, we shared our emergency room, our ED provider notes, and our urgent care provider notes. And then outpatient, we shared all specialty clinic notes. And then in April, we shared all primary care clinic notes as well. Next slide. Um, so again, these were some of the note types that we did share, and these were some of the things that came up as questions. Are we going to share HIV primary care notes? Um, there are, were concerns with California law based on HIV results, but that is very different than chronic care. And then there were questions around pediatrics, which we'll address as well. Um, next slide. So we didn't share some notes, and um, you know we we wanted to share some of these notes, but we couldn't quite get in some of the buy-in for our behavioral health uh, providers at the time. Although we were going to be readdressing that in 2019 because we have some of our psychiatrists and social workers who are very interested, but we're going to let them lead that conversation. Um, we plan for parents not to have access to adolescent notes. We do have forensic and foster care clinics for pediatrics, and those notes were not shared. We didn't share social work notes, and also some phone messages and clinic communication um, 
I think you could kind of go both ways on that, but we had concerns about the sensitivity of that and sometimes the way that our staff would write in those notes. Uh, and then nursing notes, although we just started releasing care management notes uh, last week, I think. Next slide. Um, and so adolescence. So, you know, I, everyone I think handles adolescence differently. Um, and I am not a, pediat a, a, a pediatrician, and so we relied on our uh, experts in pediatrics. We have some issues with Cerner around um, the privacy protections for adolescents, so we actually had to close our adolescent access because we couldn't mark certain visits as sensitive, like a family planning visit or an abortion procedure. But some of that is being fixed currently, and when that is appropriate, then we will relaunch our adolescent portal. Um, and again, um, that affected parent proxies as well, so it's tough uh, because we have to be careful about those appointment types, and there are certain California laws that we had to keep in mind, um, especially around adolescent care. Next slide. Um, and then what if there's a note that you don't feel comfortable sharing with the provider? We ask our providers to use their clinical judgment. They're able to use the sensitive note type when writing that note. Um, and we, you know, we're trying, I loved the graph that Sarah showed on kind of the uptake. I would love to have something similar to that. How many notes are being seen? How many sensitive note types are being written? The way that we g gather that right now is all kind of through sentinel data collection. It's just a little more complicated than it needs to be. So I can't tell you how many sensitive note types have been written, but I know other health systems have good access to that. But it looks like it's being used pretty infrequently in our health system from what we've been able to capture. And we always remind our providers that still patients can go to medical records and they will get their entire, um, all of their notes. And so keep that in mind when you're writing your note. Next slide. And so this is what the patient can see. We, we labeled it clinician note, and then they're able to see all of their notes there. Next slide. Um, and so these are some of the do's and don'ts. Um, and I think for the sake of time, we'll go to some of the next slides so everyone can present. Um, so these were some of the things that we mentioned to providers. Uh, the language, you know, I want you to look at my notes and make sure we're on the same page. Reading your notes may remind you about what we discussed when you get home. So we, we have a provider who has some patients at our, one of our LA County clinics who feels like the level of engagement with his patients is really changed as they're reading their notes, that they're coming in with more high-level questions than the discussions they were having previously. So that was one anecdote I found interesting. Also things that Sarah has mentioned, like minimizing abbreviations and then sensitive topics. Next slide. Um, I, we agree, patients do find provide errors in provider notes, and we have a policy in medical records for that, so we are continuing to follow that policy as it applies to open notes. We have not had many patients correcting notes, but I, like we said, some patients have to wait an hour to go to medical records, and so you can imagine that we have some other barriers there. Um, and then there's some additional examples. So around substance use, I think that's certainly a conversation that comes up in our medication-assisted therapy clinics where patients may want a diagnosis removed. And really it's a discussion about that diagnosis and why that's important. And I was talking with one of our providers in that clinic. He said that, that he's never had that discussion escalate just as a confirmation of this is why we're treating you here in this clinic and this is why this diagnosis is important for you. Next slide. And that's all I have for you. Thanks, Anshu.